No. Pardon me. Ow. Rolling under the uh, desk and hitting my knee is not fun, but it's just that way. If I'm, I'm not either hitting my knee or cutting my finger or cutting my hand, I, I'm just a klutz these days. I am just a, an, <laughs> a, 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 a magnet for illness and uh, injury, but uh, but I'm resilient. I heal well and quickly, and I never give up. And I think that if I had, if I ever had a tattoo, which I never will, but if I ever had one, it would be never give up, never give up, keep plugging, no matter what, you'll get there. And I encourage you to remember that in terms of your studies and your life in general. No matter how hard it gets, don't give up. You might not succeed. Sure, that's okay. But you tried and you tried hard. And that is an indicator that you'll make it, if not this time, the next time or the next time. But if you give up, there's no chance of you making it. So don't ever give up. Keep trying because you can get there. And there are people who will help you. And like I've said before, I'm one of those people. And I don't mean just in this class. After this class, if you're having trouble with something, you call Sutter and I'll do whatever I can to assist you. If you are looking for a job, I'll tell you how to interview for a job. I used to hire people. I was a sales manager for a, mag a magazine company, a me medical magazine publisher. And I hired salespeople on the East Coast, uh, uh, in New York uh, area, uh, in Chicago, that sort of thing. Well, that wasn't the West Coast, East Coast rather, but... Um, and, and there are certain techniques. I'll, I'll tell you how to interview for a job, how you can get your job. And it's it's just a matter of being cautious and being prepared and being uh, detailed. Uh, by the way, you don't have to have new shoes when you go for a job interview, but they have to be what? Anybody know? They need to be polished like you were in the army, spit polished, and they got to be clean. They got to be clean and polished. And your attire has to look like you're a professional, because if you're going to be hiring for a job that is in a corporation or a business or in computer science, whatever the case may be, if you come dressed as a slob, you're going to be considered a slob and people don't hire slobs. Unless you're really brilliant and it shows no matter how slobby you are. It, but I, I wouldn't bet on that happening for you. Uh, anyway, but there are all sorts of techniques. I'll be happy to help you with that and anything, including these tests material. And again, I'm sorry for uh, plugging in here just a few minutes late, but I was gathering some of my material to uh, share stuff with you. Uh, one person in another class had brought up an issue which I have never mentioned because it just befuddles me, but uh, I, we use an online textbook, and it's called an OER, Open Educational Resources. Uh, instead of uh, publishing a book in print, it's done online, and the authors don't get as much money for, for their work, but they still are paid for it. Uh, but your uh, work is free, and some of them can just contribute their work. Uh, of course, I say that anybody that isn't or working to make money is not going to be putting their whole heart and soul into it and trying to, well, you know, that's the capitalism. That's making money. That's, uh, you know, advancing ahead. We don't do this just because we love it. Although, you know, I like to read and I like to learn and I like to teach, but I do it because I get paid. And if I didn't get paid, goodbye. I'm out of here. Love you, but you know, bye.
but you can call me still and I'll be happy to talk about it with you, but uh, not to teach you and spend all the time that I do spend on this because I spend a lot of time on it, just like you do. If you're doing well, you've been spending a lot of time in it and that's what it takes. Okay. Um, we're on a roll here, or at least I'm on a roll. Um, too much coffee, too much coffee this morning and this afternoon. And uh, instead of diet caffeine free Coke, I'm going fully leaded today. Of course, my pacemaker is going, don't do that. The cafe makes me work harder, you know. So, anyway, we're talking about political participation, political participation, which means voting, participating in the political process in large part. Uh, uh, means watching the news. How do you know what's going on in Washington? Anybody go to Wash ever been to Washington? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, got one from Washington. Yeah. Well, good. You know what the Capitol looks like. You you may have taken the White House tour even. Uh, I've worked in the U.S. Capitol. I've worked in the White House as a volunteer, but I worked in the White House for a while. Uh, just on a couple of occasions. You've been near the White House. That's good. I mean, you've got, there's something about being in front of these, well, they're national monuments, but they're also active buildings filled with people who are making decisions that impact your life every single day. For instance, uh, if you've ever been, to, if you've not been to the Congress, been to the Capitol and seen the House and the Senate in operation, you need to. It's fascinating to watch. When I worked in Congress for a congressman, I was the doorkeeper, one of the doorkeepers, and I was assigned to the press room. And But I looked down on the chamber and saw 435 members of the House and all of the people that work with them. And I also worked in the Speaker's chamber, so I'd always see the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, it was fascinating to be in the middle of all of that. And just being there as a tourist in and of itself is, to get a, is an opportunity to get the real sense of it. My wife, before she was a teacher, had gone up there with her parents, and she ran into... Uh, was on a tour of the House of Representatives and her local congressman walked by and she said, hey, neighbor. Now the guy had said, now don't talk to a congressman. They're very busy people. And she goes, hey, neighbor. And he stops and go, neighbor? Yeah, I'm from Irving. Uh, oh, well, you're one of my constituents. Yes, sir, I am. How are you doing? Well, I'm in. And they talked for about five minutes there. It's good to see and the guy, the tour guide chew, tried to chew her out. And she said, excuse me, he's my congressman. And he talked to me because I voted for him. He works for me, just like you work for him. Now, if I tell him you're a real SOB, you may not be working for him any longer. So watch what you're saying. Don't mess with my wife. She's, she's tough. You look like you could be a little tough yourself, young lady. I mean, you're sitting there in front of that HP printer, but I know you, you're not only sharp, you just look like, you remind me a little bit of my wife. Your, your desk looks like hers, chock full of books and everything, a printer and a computer. So listen, if you get a chance to go to Washington, great. If you get a chance to go to Austin and tour the Capitol there, I worked there as well, although... My wife actually worked for uh, legislators as uh, uh, office manager and aide. Uh, and, uh, and then she also worked, we both worked for the Attorney General of Texas for a period of time. I was director of special projects and she was the bill tracker. In other words, she studied all the bills that were being passed by the legislature to explain to the lawyers what they meant because she was very politically astute. And the attorney general had been a friend of mine, and that's why I went to work for him because, well, long story short, my uh, loss, uh, I ran for county judge back in McLennan County and lost because the FBI was working with uh, the Texas Rangers and was after my boss, the DA, and if I would have gotten elected to a county 
leadership position. It might have been good for him, and they didn't want me to get elected, so they screwed my election and had me subpoenaed to a grand jury right before, two days before my election, which meant, well, hit the newspaper, Sutter subpoenaed to grand jury. Now, subpoena means you're being called to by the government for uh, testifying or appearing for something. Uh, but subpoena, suppository, both things that just doesn't sound right. You don't want it stuck up, you, you know, so to speak, either one of them. Uh, so I lost the election. So I understand how politics works. When we talk about political participation, you need to know about it because boys and girls, how you get along, how you uh, deal with, hang on a second here. Oh, there we go. Uh, how, how, how we advance our lives comes in no small measure on, on how we get benefits from our government. Uh, some of you are getting student loans. Uh, you're probably going to be paying off your education through student loans, many of you. If you go on and get a higher degree, maybe you want to be a lawyer someday. Cost a lot of money for even to go to the University of Houston Law School. If you go to a private law school like South Texas, which I did, uh, simple because it's hard to get into University of Houston. And because, well, it's cheap. And so there, it, it's, you, well, if you went to the University of Houston, you've got a big edge. So be sure you finish the rest of your degree. If you want to be a lawyer and want to go to the University of Houston Law School, finish your degree in political science or something related to that or business, or whatever, and, and then apply for law school over there. But federal funds for that, all the aspects, you are, you're in a, governmental institution right now. We are part of the Houston Community College District, and that means it's a governmental district. We have elected board members who are elected to run the board of directors for the uh, Houston Community College system. Uh, politics is infused in all aspects of your life. Uh, you're driving to work, you run a red light, who's going to stop you? It's going to be a cop. A policeman, policewoman. And who are they? They're the government. They're doing what? Enforcing the laws that are made in the Texas legislature or in the city council. Now, you wonder, well, gee, uh, you mean that's the law? I mean, that that's, that's government? Yeah, it is. That's government. Uh, even the fire department's government. The, you don't, fortunately, you do not have to pay for someone to come pick, put out your fire if your apartment or house goes, it catches on fire. Why? Because you pay taxes and taxes pay for the fire department and for the firemen and women who work for the fire department uh, so that you don't have to call and give them your credit card number and say, uh, uh, listen, I'm a little behind on my credit card. It was canceled. Can you just uh, float me on this? Oh, I'm sorry. Your house is going to have to burn down because we, you know, you don't pay. We don't, we don't, fl you're going to flame if you don't pay. So that sort of thing. No, that's what government's for, to provide services to the constituents who have elected people to city council, to uh, uh, the county commissioner's court, to the Texas legislature, to the U.S. Congress from here and provides services to us. Uh, you gonna drive to work tomorrow, to this afternoon, later? Uh, uh, you're gonna go see your relatives over in Louisiana or in Oklahoma or in New Mexico? You're gonna go on interstate highways. Where did they come from? From taxes that are charged and go to Washington, and then taxes that go into the states. If you live in Texas, you don't pay an income tax in Texas. In Louisiana, you do. So uh, although we do fund our portion of the 
building in Texas of interstate highways through Texas. Federal government uh, pays for most of it, but the state pays for some of it too. But taxes or fees will pay for that. So even the roads you have are part of government and water, sewage. I mean, what if you had to haul it out on your own? Ooh. What if you had to dig a latrine in your backyard and go out and do your number one and number two in the yard? It's much better to have water and sewage, something you and I take for granted, but this is government. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about being able to live as a community of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in the Houston area and not killing each other through disease you know, back hundreds of years ago, people would take their honey pots, in other words, their pots where they did their number one and number two, and dump them in a ditch outside of their house. And then wagons would come and scoop that up and carry it across. That's open sewage. That's fecal matter, urine. This stuff is, well, it can spread disease if somebody is sick. And this is exposed and open. People got sick and died as a result. You had the plague in countries in Europe and in the United States. That came from open sewage back before you had sewage systems. I mean, the Romans were smart to develop a system that eliminated the waste from the open air, from open air and also from the community. But not everybody was as civilized as the Roman Empire, uh, although they, they did spread civilization throughout Europe and it had its effect over here as well. Anyway, political participation, the government provides services, but do you get the services you want? You get the services you want if you are going to take part in the process. Um, right now, kids are not able to read books that they want to read in high school. Why? Because there are people who say children shouldn't read books that put ideas in their mind about how standing up to their parents. They have met in books that talk about children being gay or bisexual. Well, that's just wrong. That's just wrong. You just can't have that sort of thing. So we're going to take them books out of them schools. Anything that talks even that is not completely God-fearing and not going to talk about any kind of sin that could be done, like drinking, partying, having sex outside of their marriage. Yep. Or even fooling around in the back of the car. You know what I mean? Go to hell for that. Oh, and by the way, I may have mentioned this, but years ago I was nearly 400 pounds. I had surgery, lost it, and then exercised and got them down around 170 now, normal and, and fit. I walk several miles a day usually. And, uh, but here's the deal. Back when I was 400 pounds, I looked like I was many months overdue. I was about to drop quadruplets. But, hey, guess what? I ain't got the plumbing. I ain't going to deliver no children. So this whole thing about the United States Supreme Court and the Dobbs decision, which makes abortion illegal in the United States and states across the nation are now banning abortion, even though the states had the right under the Dobbs decision to decide to provide abortion facilities if they so desire. But there's a massive move by the right wing, backed by the ultra-conservative evangelicals who say that abortion is bad, not 
and, and Catholic Church is opposed to abortion. And these people are told in church on Sunday that abortion is a sin. That abortion is not a choice for women. It is a choice that God has made to bless her and her husband or whomever uh, with a child and to abort it even at the time of conception or before. I mean, even birth control is being talked about as being, maybe we should be eliminating the birth control pill. Maybe we should be eliminating any of these things that even provide for abortion when there is a rape or an incest. Because it's a human life regardless. Now, it's two cells, a sperm and an egg. And the belief is by people who support no abortion whatsoever, it's a sin and therefore should be illegal under the law. They believe that the human life begins when a sperm meets an egg and a two cell form of the developing life begins. The idea is, I guess you say from a religious standpoint, some of you are probably very religious. Uh, hey, I was raised in the Catholic Church and the Baptist Church. My mom was Baptist, my dad Catholic, and I'm a Catholic. I, you know, I go to both churches. Uh, I thought about becoming a priest. Then they told me about celibacy, and I said, what? Explain that to me again. Oh, no, 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 no. When I get older, I don't, no, no, no. No, we're not going to do the priesthood then. So I took the Protestant side and went to several seminaries to look into that. But, you know, my attitude about that and your attitude can be whatever you want in this country because you have the right to believe what you want to believe under our Constitution. And you have the right to act on it as long as you do not harm someone else under the laws that have been made in the states and in the federal government and under the rulings of the Supreme Court of the United States, which has recently been chocked full of appointments by Donald Trump who owes his election to conservative evangelical Christians who wanted him because he promised, you put me in office, I will do away with abortion. No one else has done that before, but I can do it. And he did it. He did it. He appointed people to the Supreme Court and packed that court with people that wanted to do away with abortion because of their religious beliefs which didn't match the majority of the religious uh, people with religious beliefs in this country, by the way. So the people that didn't vote when it came down to the election, when you had a candidate saying, I'm going to do away with abortion, and women just sat back and said, well, my husband likes Trump because he's, a, he's supposedly a big businessman and makes a lot of money and uh, he wants to vote Republican so he can you know, advance in his corporate job and that sort of, so I just got to go along with it. And then they find themselves going, I can't have an abortion? Wait a minute, I'm, my husband's making a lot of money. I can have an abortion. I'll just go over to another state. No, we're passing laws where you can't go to another state and have an abortion. Political participation. If you vote, you will elect people that reflect your belief. If you let other people vote, other people who have different opinions, they'll vote and they'll have laws passed that you may not like. I mean, they might want to do away with cats like this one here. The cat doesn't care, you know cat can't vote and you know they're not going to do away with cats i mean the mice will take over then and that would be even worse so participation means voting it means knowing how the process works 
it means knowing that if I sit on my butt, somebody else is going to be pretty much running my life. And I will not have much of a say in it. Because the laws I have to live under are not the laws that I would have wanted. Well, I, I don't think they ought to have that law. Then why didn't you get yourself to the polls and vote the people in that would make the laws that you think are right? Because either you're too lazy or you're too busy doing some other things or you don't understand how important it is to learn how government works and then make sure you know how to vote and who the candidates are and what they stand for and take some time and take some money and contribute both to the candidate you want to see elected because it costs money to run for office i mean down here in houston if you want to run for congress well if you want to run for congress i live in sugarland if you want to run for congress out here in the sugarland area you still have to be on television in the Houston television stations because they, you know, cover what the news and that's what we see down here in Sugarland. Well, 30 seconds of airtime on channel 13 costs upwards of $10,000 during a newscast. Just for 30 minutes of air between the newscast and the weather. Now, then you have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to produce a really good in this market because of its uh, sophistication and uh, really top-notch television stations, uh, three top-notch television stations, the CBS, ABC, and, C, uh, and, and, and uh, NBC affiliates. Uh, cost a lot of money to buy local ads, to buy the time on the, and you want to be, why would you want to buy specifically, when would you buy your commercials, by the way? You want to buy them during the newscast because people who vote watch the news. People who watch the news vote. It works that way. People who read newspapers vote. People who don't read newspapers don't vote. Why? Because people who read newspapers are interested in what's happening in their community and what they can do to make life better for their family. And they know that politics is part of the way of doing it and being participation participants in the process. Same way with watching television news, but it's expensive. So it's driven by money. Uh, you give a little bit, that's great. But who gives most? Wealthier people. Wealthier people sometimes have interests different from you and me. Uh, now, if some of you are sitting there going, well, actually, I'm quite wealthy. Uh, I, my cousin, Richie Rich, uh, okay, most of you have not read Richie Rich comic books, but he's, I think they're still published, but uh, he was a rich little kid and everything. Uh, rich kids, mm, you know, mom and daddy will take care of everything. They make a lot of money. And guess what? Usually people who make a lot of money go out and vote. Why? Because they want to make sure that they got people in office to make sure that they get the tax cuts that they want. You and me don't get the tax cuts like the guys that have making a lot of money because they have better lawyers and congressmen who will pass laws to make sure their business gets tax protection. Why? Because I elected that SOB so that he would do that. We want to make sure that the oil business gets all sorts of tax protection. We want to make sure that the computer industry gets tax support as well as tax breaks in what we do. So we don't have to pay as much and can use the money to make profits for us and our shareholders. And by the way, running the state of Texas, although, you know, we're not a Texas class, but Texas does not have an income tax. We're one of the few states that does not have an income tax, but we do. But that's part of participation as well. That's part of the involvement. 
So let's talk about elections. Let's just get right, let's dig down into the elections and let me go ahead and talk about the whole process of elections because I'm assuming that a lot of you do vote, but I'm assuming a lot of you don't. So we're gonna test heavily on elections and the process of elections. I have a good set of lecture notes and let's talk about that. And you can, uh, Look at those lecture notes later if you haven't done so already. But in the United States, we have major elections nationally every two years, across the country every two years. This every two year cycle is there because we elect members of the entire House of Representatives and the entire House of Representatives, as well as the lower chambers of almost every one of the state's legislatures are elected on that two-year basis or four-year basis on a rotating basis on every two years for some members of the legislatures. It all depends on the states, how they set them up. Uh, we also have a portion of the membership of the U.S. Senate and the Texas Senate, as well as the upper chambers of most of the state legislatures elected every two years. And during this two-year cycle, every other two years, to be precise, we also elect who? The president. The president has a four-year term. So every other two-year election, we're electing the president of the United States for his four-year term. The major election held every two years in November in even-numbered years is called the general election in the United States, the general election. There's a whole cacophony, a mix of federal and state laws that regulate elections and election law in the United States and establish this national general election that's held every two years. Uh, the main reason for the two-year election cycle is the requirement in the Constitution that the House of Representatives be elected every two years. 435 members of the House of Representatives are up for election every two years. Uh, members of the House serve a two-year term, and all 435 are up every two years. The general election in our country is held on the Tuesday following the first Monday in November every even-numbered year. Every even-numbered year. Uh, this is October. What's going to happen next November here? in just a few days in the next month what will be happening the general election it's an even numbered year we're going to elect all the members of the u.s house of representatives we're going to be electing members of the u of the texas senate and the texas house of representatives not all of the senators are up for election in the texas senate but that but that but we'll, we'll talk about that in when we're in, in much more depth when you're in Texas government, but the United States, members of the United States Senate serve a six year term of office. And more than likely, you know, I'm not sure right now, we have two US senators, of course, from Texas, like every state does. Uh, I, I, I don't know if our two US senators are up in this upcoming general election. I don't think they are. I don't think they are. Uh, but they are in other states, depending on when they were elected. So every two years, we have a major election nationally. Uh, for example, the people elected in the November uh, election last year, uh, in, in 2000 and... Uh, what did I say? This is in 2020. They took office in January of 2021 and a new Congress began. I don't remember what the session number is right now, but they number the session. Uh, it's in the notes that I have there uh, from a few years back, but the system remains the same. But in 2017, that new Congress was the 217th Congress, so 17, 18, 19, 19, 20, 
2021. So actually we're in the 118th session, 118th session. <laughs> Notice I was using my fingers because I can't. Math is numbers are not my friend. I can do words all day long. I could I I read dictionaries. I like dictionaries. I like new words. But be that as it may, uh, got to know how to count as well. So a third of the members of the hundred member Senate is up for election, generally, in. The November election, they 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 have them set up so that uh, people get elected. The whole Senate is not elected at the same time because of their six-year term of office. Uh, they come up at their own time, and depending on when they were elected. Uh, in Texas, the Texas legislature began a new session in January. The entire Texas of uh, uh, 2021, the entire Texas House of Representatives, all 150 members have a two-year term of office. But that's, again, Texas. Uh, the uh, November general election was a uh, presidential election when? In 2000 and what? 2000 and 2000, in the year 2000. So when are we having our next presidential election? 2004. That's right. Right? What year is this? This is 2022. Good. Okay. Right. We had our last presidential election 2004. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yay. My wife is backing me up on that. Yes, indeed. So, two more years. Oh, by the way, uh, People are running right now, as you well know. And it is when the two that the presidential election brings everybody out to vote. In a non-presidential year like 2022, you don't have as many people showing up to vote in, for members of Congress, members of their uh, state legislatures. Why? Because when you turn on the television and you watch the news, uh, have you, do you ever see your local congressman on television? No, certainly not down here in Houston because there is a bundle of them. Uh, even when I was in Waco and a television reporter there and producer, uh, we very seldom had the local congressman on because it was, you know, they're, people are not all that interested in what they're doing. They're interested in who they see on the national news all the time, who they're, who, who's talked about on, if you're, you're slightly interested in politics, you're going to be watching CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, uh, and who do they talk about? They talk about the president probably 70% of the time because it is so much easier for a camera lens, which is about that big on most television cameras. I used to stare at them when I was reading the news. That, that, that camera looks at one person it can't, it can take a view of a room full of people, but you can only hear one person speaking at a time. And in a given, any market, you're going to have any number of polit political figures vying to get in front of that television. So it, that, that, that's part of it. it uh, we don't spend time watching the interviews with uh, members of the Texas House of Representatives or the Texas legislature, or even the U.S. House of Representatives from our area. Why? Because I don't even know who that guy is. I don't remember voting for him. You don't see him on television ever because everybody wants to see the president. 
because the national news covers it all the time. And because we have put so much invested in the presidency. So it's you're not gonna you're not gonna get the turnout unless you're in a presidential election year. Uh, uh, again in the November general election of two thousand and uh, 2022, uh, the statewide officers of Texas government were elected, and you had members of Congress elected every two years. Uh, the general election is referred to when the president is not up for election. It's called an off-year election or a midterm election, meaning in the middle of the president's four-year term of office when he uh, when that he and that office are not on the general election ballot, that off your election. Uh, and in November 2020, we went through the process of electing a president of the United States as part of the two year general election cycle. We commonly refer to the general election year in which we elect a president as a presidential election year. Because the president has a four-year term of office, he's elected every other general election. That's the 2000, 2004, 2006, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, so on. Uh, we call it that because we put so much emphasis, emphasis and give so much attention to presidential elections that in the general election years, when we're not picking a president, voter participation's way down, way down than what it is during a presidential year, election year, way up. People are showing up. In that off-year election, we vote on statewide offices, county offices, members of Congress, and state legislatures. But not a president. And so you're not going to see wall to wall coverage of, a, of the men and women running for the presidency. Uh, how different life in this country would be if in 2000 a person named Hillary was elected president as opposed to the guy named Donald who was elected president. So if you don't think elections matter, just think of where we are in our country today after a four-year term of office with Donald Trump, as opposed to what would have possibly been like if Hillary Clinton, who is, well, let's quite, let's face it, she is a public policy geek. She is, she's got kind of a computer for a head, but she also has a big heart. I mean, she's been involved in all types of charity work. She's been in all, involved in all types of work to help women in office and help women in America and help children. But she also knows politics. She was Secretary of State later uh, and traveled the world and was one of the most effective, a very effective Secretary of State. Uh, Donald Trump, well, he was the son of a very wealthy New York hotel and real estate magnate. And he got that money and he built casinos. He bought yachts uh, and he broke contracts left and right. He was constantly being sued, but because he did have a lot of family money, he hired more lawyers than a lot of the other people did. Uh, like I've said before, whenever I was in New York on business, Trump always came up and the business managers, product managers for major corporations to a person said, guy's a crook. I would never do business with that man. 
and uh, be that as it may, that's where we are in the country today. So who gets elected matters. Now, if you're a Trump supporter, God bless you. This is the United States of America. You get that. Choose who you want to. Whether the person is good or bad, in my estimation, makes no difference whatsoever. Just like if you like the people I like, great. If you don't like the people I like, great. That's what this is about. And so I try to educate people on how it works. And then on my own, I will proselytize for the people I believe. I will be campaigning for the people I believe will do the country well. And that's what you do. That's what you'll do when you become a bigger participant in politics and understand how it makes a difference in your life. Again, those of you who are female are starting to think about this. Because ladies... If you're raped, you can't have an abortion. If, God forbid, you become the victim of incest, you have to carry that baby to term. You have to because abortion is illegal, going to be illegal in the country completely, and it is moving rapidly toward that thanks to the Dobbs Supreme Court decision recently. It has changed, it has changed the face of America. And again, if you're an evangelical Christian or a Catholic, you may say, well, that's the way it's supposed to be because we believe that God makes that soul there in the person. And so that two cell thing is not just a thing, it's a human being right now, two cells. I wouldn't go fishing with two cells, but it's going to be a human being. Oh, if it's going to be a human being, is it a human being? Ooh. Tough questions. Uh, to win a general election, a candidate needs to only receive a plurality of the votes. Uh, plurality is the most votes that any candidate in a race receives. It doesn't have to be a majority. Uh, if you win by 51%, that you, you won. That's okay. Uh, if you win by 59%, whoopee, that's great. But either way, you still win. Okay, political party primaries. In every general election year, the two major parties in our two-party system, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, have their primary elections in the months before the summer. It's in these party elections that are funded by the political parties and the state governments. Uh, uh, the, Demo uh, they, the, the two parties select their candidates to run for the offices that are open that year in the November general election. Whoever wins their party's nomination for a office, such as as the Republican candidate for governor and, and, and the Democratic candidate for governor, uh, automatically appears on the general election in, that in November, that in the general election ballot in November of the general election year. Only candidates, uh, only candidates from the two major parties will, by the much more difficult. Uh, by, by the laws, excuse me, by the laws established in each case, automatically appear on the general election ballot. It's much more difficult for major party candidates to get on the general election ballot in November. Why? Because the state legislatures write the election laws for each of their individual states. And in every state, the legislature is made up of almost entirely Republicans and Democrats who may not agree on many political issues, but they do agree that they, the two parties, the two major parties, want to maintain control of election. So they don't make it easy for anybody but Democrats and Republicans to get on the ballot in the general election. Well, that's not fair. Whoa. You're just learning that it's not fair out there. 
you got to fight for fair. And then you got to move beyond that. Uh, which is why you participate or you <laughs> get left behind. Uh, and, you know, you, are you surprised that the people that are running the show aren't going to give up the ability to run the show? Dem like, like, like I said, you may be a Democrat and really detest Republicans and vice versa. But the one thing Democrats and Republicans agree on, hey, I, we think, I think you're, you're reprehensible and you think I'm reprehensible. But one of us reprehensible SOBs gonna get elected, you know? And if we open it up, then, hey, we, both of us might get tossed out. And that wouldn't be right because one of those persons might have been me. And you're thinking the same thing. So that's why I don't like you. You don't like me, but we're going to work together to make sure we're still the only two people who got the chance. Oh, ooh, that's selfish. Oh, that's not right. Well, you get in there and change it if you don't like it. But it's not going to change if you're sitting on your hands, not doing anything. Okay. Um, in Texas, our two party primaries held in March on the first Tuesday of March. Other states hold their party primaries at other times throughout the first part of the general election year. The very first state in the country, traditionally, to hold a party primary is in February. And in what state? Does anybody know? out of diet caffeine free coke anybody know now if my cat would just go get me a diet coke i'd be happy oh my wife is in the room and she said i'll do it the cat just doesn't have thumbs won't be helpful she has thumbs and she's also a wonderful person and i gotta do it for her later uh, when she's lecturing because she teaches also uh, New Hampshire traditionally has always been the first and the, the states respect that because that's tradition. And it also presents a sort of a bellwether for the nation to say, ah, this is the direction we're going. We have a little bit better idea of who might be one of our top candidates in both parties or our top candidate in the Republican Party and the top candidate in the Democrat Party. Uh, in whatever month the state holds its two party primaries after the New Hampshire primary, both the Republican and Democratic parties hold their primary elections on the same day. It's during the primary that people who want to be their party's nominee for offices are up for election, be up for election, no, the general November general election, compete to win their party's nomination for those contested offices. That's what the primary is all about, getting on the November ballot so that you can get elected in opposition to the guy from the other party. And there may be other parties involved, but most Americans, the vast majority of Americans are either Republican or Democrat. Third party candidates, well, first of all, like we said, Republicans and Democrats who are in office make elections law to try to keep the party primaries open to them and hard for others to get into it. So that's generally going to help maintain the two party system. And so, and that's why most people or either a Republican or a Democrat. And by the way, and there are colorations or variations of the membership of the Republican and Democratic Party. You have very liberal Democrats. If you hear a Republican say about, talk about Democrats, they'll say they're practically communists, them Democrats. They're trying to destroy the country. 
they're so liberal. Whereas you'll have Democrats saying, these conservatives, you see, they are so conservative, they make Adolf Hitler seem like a nice guy. They want to just control everybody's life from their from their uterus all the way through their education. And no one's going to read books that we don't approve. We don't want any ideas that we disagree with getting in their heads. Okay. But you know what? There are more moderate Republicans. In fact, there have been in the past real liberal Republicans but still have a belief in the Republican Party's basic principles of self-determination, of uh, support of business and personal growth, that sort of thing, which is, I agree with as well. Uh, and on the Democratic side, you have conservative Democrats who don't like liberal Democrats. Or you have moderate Democrats middle of the road democrats who look at some guys some of their candidates okay he's a, he's real liberal but he has some great ideas but i've got some more conservative members of the party that have equally good ideas i i consider myself a moderate i see both sides of the issue even within my own party but i am in my own party very strongly so since I was a kid. I mean, I campaigned when I was a kid uh, because my dad was active in politics. A lot of you may have fam a dad and mom that were involved in politics. And so if you, if I got, I'm talking to anybody that's active in politics right now, it's probably because your mom and dad were. And you followed them when they were out campaigning for somebody or when they'd go vote, they'd take you along to show you what's going on. That's a big cup, isn't it? It's bigger than my head. Actually, it's about the same size. I'm tired, you know. I say, say, as you well know, I say silly things from time to time. Just get used to it. <laughs> my wife had to. Not that she has gotten used to it. Anyway, usually there are several candidates running against each other in the party primary to win their party's nomination for a particular office. In the primary election, the candidate must win the election by a majority, at least 50% plus one. If no candidate wins the primary race for a particular office by a majority, a runoff will be held 30 days after the primary between the person who gets the most votes and the person who got the second most votes. In that two-party runoff election, one of the two candidates almost certainly will win a majority of the vote, and that person wins the nomination and shows up on the general election ballot as their party's nominee for that position. In the very rare case that a, an exact 50-50 tie occurs, that race will often be decided by a coin toss. Because, hey, it was closed before. We can't spend the money to do it again and have the same thing happen. We need to move on. When you vote on election primary day, you'll go to a designated central location in your voting precinct. The county is divided into voting precincts so that you can vote in your local neighborhood. You know, it may be in a local church or a local elementary school or high school, whatever. Uh, and there will be, oh, the Republicans will have, will be in the cafeteria, cafetorium, you know, which is an auditorium that is made into a cafeteria the rest of the day. And they also have a stage in there. A lot of schools do that. Uh, or And then the Democrats have it in the library or vice versa. In other words, where there's a big space, and you go to your separate primary. Uh, Republicans are going to go to their primary, so they get the candidates they want, and Democrats will go to the, the their primary to get the candidates they want on the general election ballot. Now, sometimes 
you'll find real party activists sometimes going in and actually voting in the other party's primary to make sure a weaker candidate gets nominated. I mean, if we knew, we knew that that guy is going to be, hey, he's getting close to winning, and he's a real doofus, and the guy that we've got on our side will just kick his behind into the next uh, uh, century or backwards or wherever, just he'll get beaten. We want him to be the candidate we're running against because we can beat him with no problem. So a lot of people might go over and vote. Well, that's not right. It's not illegal because you can pick and choose because once you vote in a primary, you are labeled as a Democrat if you vote in the Democratic primary because you ballot is marked Democratic. So you're a Democrat for the primary. That doesn't mean that you're a Democrat, just means you voted in it, but it also means that you're a Democrat. So you can go into the Democratic things and say, oh yeah, I voted in the primary, I decided to become a Democrat. Um, or maybe I just did it this once because of I'm going to screw with you guys. But I liked you so much, I'm going to come join you. But technique as to what to do. Anyway, you'll go to your local in your local voting precinct, and again, it's going to be some public building uh, to go in. Uh, you'd go vote at that central location, uh, and it's divided into those two locations. And on Texas, in because we're here in Texas on our primary day, you can choose to take part in either Democratic or Republican primary. It's your choice. If you voted Republican last time and voted in the Republican primary and you want to vote in the Democratic primary, go. You can do it. You can do it. This is what's called an open primary. We have an open primary where a voter can vote in either party's primary and not have to be a declared party member to participate. However, when you vote in a particular party's primary during a given election year and there's a runoff election in the other party's primary, you can't vote in that other party's runoff election. I mean, you're locked into being in your the party you voted in in the general, I mean, in the primary election if there's a runoff. If there's a runoff, you can only vote in that party's primary that you voted in. I mean, if there's a runoff in the other party, which you actually are a member of, and you just, just snuck over to mess with this one, you can't go vote over there. Well, I don't want to think I want to go over there and vote for guy I like. He's my friend. Well, you kamikaze over there and by voting. You can't. You've crashed. You sacrificed your vote for your friend in order to try to make sure that he gets elected. And the bad guy that's going to get nominated that you helped get nominated in the opposing party gets nominated and you can beat him in the general election okay uh you're restricted to voting in a runoff in the party of your initial primary vote in fact when you vote in the primary your voter card is stamped republican if you voted in the republican primary if you voted democratic at the primary your card is stamped Democratic or Democrat. Does it mean you're a Democrat? What well, means you voted in the primary? In most instances, it also means you're a Democrat. But that's not an official statement as to your party affiliation. Uh, this is a characteristic of a closed primary, but this closed aspect of the Texas primary system only applies to runoff elections, where you voted Democratic, you got to stay Democratic for the runoff. If you didn't vote in either primary initially, you can vote in either party's runoff election. Oh, well, you didn't vote in the primary. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I know that. I want to vote in the runoff. 
You can do that? Yes. Don't you know? Well, I, I'm new to this. I just, just want to help out. Well, you're not helping by you know, getting not the information right. Anyway, no, you, you, you can run. You can vote in a runoff if you didn't vote in the initial primary. Uh, so this is why Texas is said to have a combination of a closed and open primary. Uh, in the general election later in the year, you can vote with absolutely no restrictions on for either Democrat or Republican or other party nominees. It could be the 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 uh, Perot party, Ross Perot years ago, a Dallas millionaire decided to run on his own party or whatever. And or uh, you could be in uh, there are any numbers of third parties, small. Uh, no chance of ever winning because their membership is extremely small. But hey, you can vote for any of the, the Moose Lovers Party, whatever it could be. Uh, it's important to note that here in our state, uh, you don't register to be a member of the Republican Party or register to be a Democrat. At any point in the primary system, the stamp placed on your voter registration card that we were talking about, when you vote in one of the two party primaries, simply reflects the fact that you voted in that party's primary, be it Republican or Democrat. In other states, voters must be registered members of that particular party in whose primary the voter wishes to vote. We say in Texas, yeah, you know, do what you want to do, one way or the other. But once you go in that direction, and if there's anything happening after that, you got to stick with it. But only for this election cycle. The temporary party organization, so that people can participate in their party's planning, uh, in their platform organization. Uh, the, the temporary party organization occurs in three stages. Oh, and, and, excuse me. Let me let me re, let me go back. I'm getting it's confused. So people can participate in their party's planning, platforms, purpose. Uh, in other words, their organization of the party. Every two years during the general election year, the temporary party organization pops into existence, oh, like a rising from the grave. In Texas, as in most other states, the temporary party organization occurs in three stages during the off-year election, the non-presidential election, the precinct election, your local county precinct where you go vote, the county, or maybe called the district convention, and the state convention, three tiers, local primary in your precinct, the county or district convention, and then the state convention, precinct convention, county or district convention, and the state convention. In a presidential year, those three levels takes place. And then on top of that, a national party convention is also held where we nominate a president for our party. I have been to a national democratic presidential nominating convention in New York City. I was not a delegate, but I knew guys with creden who were running the credentials for who got in because they were from the house doorkeeper's office. And in fact, the head was there and he said, Sutter, how are you doing? What are you doing up here? Well, I come to New York on business now because I work for a publishing company. Hey, you're making money, huh? Well, but I want to come into the convention. Can you give me credentials? Oh, hell yeah, sure. So they worked up my credentials to let me in. I was not a delegate, but I had credentials allowed me to walk on the floor. So I saw, if you've ever watched a convention on television, you see television reporters with a mobile camera uh, or whatever, and they're, you know, talking and they're in their business suit and looking all professional. You never notice, though, that as I noticed when I was there, these guys and gals 
have thick athletic socks on and tennis shoes because they're standing all day long and they don't wear their high heels or their, you know, all them loafers or, because they hurt if you stand in one place all the time. So from, you know, the waist up, you see the $2,000 suit and you don't see the, you know, kids or not kids, you know, they'll be expensive tennis shoes because they're, they make a lot of money. Uh, fascinating to watch the convention. That's where you nominate a presidential candidate for your party. Uh, anyway, uh, in Texas, as well as most states, a temporary partner organization comes in three stages in the off-year elections, precinct county, precinct county or district convention, and the state convention. If you've worked your way up from your precinct convention to go to the county convention, because by the way, the way to do that, if you want to go to the county convention and get involved in things, take friends to go vote that live in your area. And then take your friends after they voted to the precinct convention of your party. And then you're sitting there with about 15 or 20 other people. And some of them want to go to the county convention, but they want to go to the state convention, maybe the national convention. So do you. It's determined by who's voting. And if you stuff the ballot box with friends, you might win a seat to go to the county convention. Well, this newcomer, he's never been here before. Yeah, but hey, hey, he got the votes. I didn't know these new either. I guess they knew him. But he probably just brought him in. So that's what we call democracy. <laughs> they have a right to vote. And they wanted to be Democrats today for the Democratic Precinct Convention. And they wanted Sutter to go to the county convention. So, hey, congratulations. You just learned, learned about the process, my friend. Uh, the precinct convention held at each election precinct after the poll closed on the primary election day. Uh, you returned to the voting precinct where you voted and attended the precinct or Democrat, uh, Republican or Democratic precinct convention. Conventions are held uh, in each voting precinct in the state after the polls close on primary election day. At the precinct convention, attendees discuss political issues relative to the party platform. In other words, a statement of where we stand. Precinct 32's political platform includes the right of a woman to have an abortion on demand, the right of men and women of color to vote freely without impediments imposed by local officials, so on and so forth. Whatever y'all decide are going to be important issues to you, uh, those are part of the party platform. God, what the hell is a plat party platform? When people go give a speech back in back when you build a platform for politicians are going to give speeches, uh, you know, in the local park where politicians are going to have a big rally. Uh, what do they do? They, they build a wooden platform for everybody to stand on to speak. In other words, the platform of the party is what we, the party, stand on. And the planks in the platform are the issues that we believe are important to be put into law. So the planks in the pat platform are the positions that the party, we want the party to take. And those are going to be reflected by the votes we have for which of these planks are going to be part of our party platform. That we support abortion rights, that we want equal rights for people of color, that we want uh, 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 
uh, no banning of books in public schools, uh, so on and so forth, whatever the case may be. And the Republicans say, we, we, we want to, a part of our pilot platform, of course, is to make sure that abortion is legal and uh, women are put who have an abortion are put in jail. Uh, we uh, want uh, to ban books that uh, young people read and make sure they read pure books and no books that have anything mentioned about sex or homosexuality or anything that make not make them think. Um, <laughs> sorry, but that's what's happening. I'm just relaying the facts of what's going on out there right now. Uh, at that precinct convention, attends, attendees discuss the political issues, vote on the plank, issue planks in their precinct platform, and vote for delegates from the precinct convention to, up, to attend the upcoming county or the state, if they've arranged it to be a district convention. Most of me, mostly they're going to be county conventions. The county or district convention is held every two, about a month, excuse me, they're held, of course, every two years, uh, about a month following the precinct convention. Those in attendance are the delegates who are selected from their precinct conventions to represent their precinct at the county convention. The district convention is held when two or more small counties hold a convention together. Uh, at a county convention, delegates discuss political issues of interest to their party, either Democratic or Republican Party. They vote on the issue planks for their county party platform, and they elect delegates from their convention to attend the party's state convention. And at the state convention, we talk about issues that the state of Texas here have to say about the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, whichever one you've gone to. The state convention is held a month or so following the county convention in the state. Those in attendance are the delegates elected from the party's county conventions. At the state convention, delegates discuss political issues of interest to their party, meet the candidates for office, and vote on issue planks for their state party platform. Their position for the, what the state of Texas Democratic Party or Republican Party believes need be law for the United States of America. God bless it. Us Democrats know what's best. Well, us no, the Republicans definitely know what's best. Hey, we both think that way. That's what happens in a democracy. You get to think about what you want and how you believe and fight for it. So does the other guy. And hopefully the best idea wins. Sometimes the people with the most money to buy the most television ads are the ones that win because people watch tv and I mean, how many times have you bought something because it looked good on television and you get it it's just a piece of yeah you go why don't i pay attention to these commercials they're so funny and those little dancing mice and everything and all oh, those beautiful women and those handsome guys and the fast cars oh i gotta have one of them cars uh and they're telling me that they're, i can afford it particularly if i take out a loan for the rest of my life <laughs> same way politicians are doing the same thing advertising on television just telling them that i've got ideas that will make your life better I have ideas that reflect your values in America. Oh, I intend to make this a better country for you. I intend to make this a stronger nation so that our enemies across the seas will be punished if they try ever to harm the United States of America. God bless it. Only those of you who are older, if there are any of you I sometimes have adults, will know what I'm talking about because that was what Nixon did when he was out campaigning. He would go, victory, I'm for victory. Actually, I'd take Nixon today over some of the other people who are running in the other party, other party for me. Hey, I'm, let's face it, I'm a Democrat, as you well know. But 
I have voted Republican before on a couple of occasions because the guy was good. And on a couple of occasions, one occasion was because I knew the guy. I've also campaigned for Republicans. I wasn't going to vote for them, but my best buddy was working for a Republican candidate, very interested in politics, and we worked together in the congressional office. Uh, and even though the guy, my congressman was a Democrat, he was a conservative Democrat, and this guy was a Republican, but he was, uh, he liked Mr. Pogue, my congressman, and Mr. Pogue liked him, and his daddy had a big ranch, so, and Mr. Pogue was a rancher and farmer, so my friend Mark uh, went to work, and I made sure he got introduced to Mr. Pogue, and so, but he was Republican. He was supporting Dole, and I was supporting Dukakis. This was years ago, of course. And we got in his pickup truck, and I had Dukakis signs, the Democrats, and he had Dole signs, and we'd hammer them on fence posts out in the county together because we worked together. We knew that Dole was a good man. I knew Dole was a good man, and we wouldn't be in bad shape if he got elected. And he knew that Dukakis was a good man. Didn't like what he said, but he knew that it wouldn't do the country bad. Uh, it's kind of the same way a few years back when uh, uh, John McCain was running for president against Obama. Uh, well, I was, I've been to, went to a couple of Obama rallies and I was at Obama fan, but I also liked John McCain, a Republican. He served in Vietnam. He was a fighter pilot. He crashed. He was a prisoner of war. He was a hero, and he was a decent human being, and I knew that if he became president, he might be a Republican, but he'd be a damn good president, and he'd care about this country no matter what, and he would do what he knew was right, even if it pissed off some of the people in his own party. His daughter today, oh, no, no, excuse me, I'm thinking, excuse me, his daughter also was uh, quite a character, but I'm confusing him all of a sudden with the, uh, Dick Cheney, who was President George W. Bush's vice president. And Dick Cheney was a character, but also a brilliant guy, very conservative, Republican. Uh, but he, he was, he, if he had become president, if something happened to president Bush, he would have, he'd have done the country right. He really would have done the country right. And his daughter, Liz Cheney ran for Congress out West, got elected. And she's been one of the leaders in the January 6th investigation into the riots that Trump precipitated, well arranged pretty much, which caused the deaths of a number of people and destroyed part of the Capitol and was one of the saddest days in my life to see grown men and women telling people, yelling, kill Nancy, kill Nancy. Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic uh, majority leader of the House of Representatives. They would have killed her. They were intending to kill her. They killed several police officers. Police officers killed them because they were defending the United States Capitol. These guys defecated in the House of Representatives chamber and in the Senate chamber because they disdained our American government. This is what we call fascism. This is the deterioration of a country when armed groups of rioters are egged by a president to go in and destroy another branch of government and perhaps kill people, maybe the leaders. Even Mr. Trump wanted them to drag Vice President Pence, his vice president, because 
Trump said, well, I won the election. It was stolen from me. It was stolen from me. Pence knew it was not stolen, and he was going to do his constitutional duty as vice president to confirm the election. They were there to kill him. So this is, again, I, we're in a difficult time. But you still need to participate. You need to bring sanity and reason to both parties. I mean, there are there are nutbags in the Democratic Party. Trust me on this. Just like there are nutbags in the Republic, uh, Dem Republican Party, without a doubt. Cheney, Liz Cheney, is not one of them. She's a courageous woman. Be following that. Anyway, oh gosh. We've been talking for a period of time. We've talked about, we've gotten into the temporary party organization. We're going to talk about the presidential primary system. And we're going to talk about the electoral college. Oh my gosh. Be sure you read all the stuff about the electoral college so that you're going, huh? And try to figure out, well, why don't we just elect the president directly? So think about that for our next meeting. So be sure you read all the material and read the notes that I published. Start working on all the review sheets that I have. And when you're reading your textbook, take notes. Write down terms. Make, start making study sheets of your own so that you... By the way, it enforces, reinforces in your brain what you're doing if you'll write it down. So, any questions? No, and I have no idea how I got both hands cut, but uh, that's, you know, so in case you're wondering, I'm okay. It's no big deal. It's small, minor cuts. Any questions? Okay, then. I will see you in another couple of days. And also, we will continue discussing this. And uh, if you have any questions, email me. I'll be happy to assist you and work with you on anything you have and answer any questions. If you have any problems with any work you're doing, write me. I'll write you back, okay? Well, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Let's just end the meeting here. Do I?